Okay, I've got a great session today that I'm quite excited about. The reason I'm excited is that it is an owner bringing me a dog that has a lot of issues to work through. And what I love about these sessions, it enables me to help an owner, help a dog, and then help you guys out there who are having the same issues. So running through them, we've got a dog that has a strong prey drive. It's a border collie, wants to chase bikes or scooters, won't go in a crate and stay there without barking, has a lot of problems when it comes to protesting. In other words, it will tell the owner it doesn't want to do things and it has bitten her. It was at a vet when it bit her. So it really has a bit of a myriad of problems that we've got to work through. And like I said, I'm excited about this because it enables me to help her help the dog and essentially help you guys out there. So I uh, hope you enjoy this. Let's do it. In this conversation early on, guys, the sound is a little bit quiet, so I thought I'd jump in quickly and do a, a voiceover. Now, what we're talking about here is the owner's explained to me the process she's been through before coming to me. She's had two behaviourists, she's had a trainer come round to the house and spent a lot of money and gotten a lot of advice and gotten nowhere with the dog. She's been advised to place orange tape on the ground to create boundaries for her dog, been told to do the ignoring process, using the food, doing the positive only, and she's got nowhere at all. She's at the end of her tether, she had enough, but does not want to give up. She's a great dog owner and is prepared to do whatever is asked of her in my session. She's come to me after trying these other people, hoping that we can get some success in this session and I can uh, enable her to leave here having the skill base, having the knowledge and be able to fix these problems. And if you guys know from my previous videos, you know the approach I take. It is a lot less fast, it is more black and white, it is more yes and no. It's very binary for a dog. I don't get fancy, I don't use a lot of food. I really try to communicate with dogs how I believe they understand best. And this is what we try to get through in the session to this owner. Um, so she can go away with the skills and implement these uh, new rules and new, new skill base to her dog and get a big change. My simple breakdown with dog training I've always used is a dog has a desire to do a certain thing, let's say, chase a bike. To stop chasing that bike, to switch it off, you A, you won't do it with food, you won't do it with, hey, don't do that. There has to be a consequence for that, okay? It's got to be consequence that slightly outweighs the desire. It's a bit like a child with a mum and a dad. The, say, let's say that mum's a tough one, the dad's a soft one. They might do a certain behaviour with the dad knowing the consequence isn't that bad. Dad goes, you're grounded, but only grounds me for a day. Mum actually does it for a week. So I'm not going to misbehave with mum, but I'm going to do it with dad. I'm telling everyone out there and telling you that this is the problem with, with people and why we get, we get with dogs. And also you, as you've learned, have a breed that is even stronger. They're bred to do what they do. Like every dog's bred to do a job. I should also tell you I'm not a lazy person. No, you don't look like you're a lazy person. No, you've been up, we've walked. No, I have no doubt at all. This, we need to go, we need to regress with this guy. We need to reset his foundations. Yeah. I call it like a recalibration and go, hey, I'm in control, which is you, yeah. and this is how it is, and we're not gonna do it with food. I have a food pouch on, but we're not gonna use a biscuit for this guy, okay? okay. I'm gonna take it off, because he doesn't need it. Just so I tell you that, because some people get border collies and go, oh my God, nightmare, but then they haven't done the thing. That's before. right, if you do the right thing with nearly any breed and train it the right way and get guided the right way, you can avoid a lot of this. Yeah. Look, we all know there's really two schools of thought with dog training now. There's positive only, which is sort of what you've been through. Redirect, food, tape on the... What's the tape on the ground? That was to establish boundaries in the house. So they okay. said that... The, I think it was orange tape that they had an, an aversion to or something to do with their sight. I have no idea. At that point, I was pretty much checked out thinking I've just paid so you, much for this. So what does it cost you? Oh, it was 300 bucks. So would you agree that... If you have a child that misbehaves and you want to stop that misbehavior, is it better to like redirect and distract, give a chocolate bar equivalent to a biscuit or go, hey, don't do that. And they go, no worries, I won't do it. And they learn boundaries and they get told that I can't do that. They mark the behavior. A bit like at school, I use this analogy all the time. You've got 30 kids playing, two kids are a little bit too rough, Not, nothing big teacher to bends over and probably instinctively without him being taught probably just goes hey you two settle down she marked that he she marked that behavior went this is a level I can play to there was a consequence that was enough for children and they got it now the training is the same for an adult but our consequence might be 
adult go into a jail. The point is, the consequences is still there, but it's relative to the crime or the action. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing. Consequence, don't do that. That's why we don't want to speed, drink, drive, do these things, because there's a consequence if we do it. True? So we've got to do this with this dog. Yep. Are you married to the idea of using that collar only, or are you okay to try other equipment? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So that, I think we can get away with a slip lead more than anything. Um, I think a slip lead will be fine with this guy. Rightio, so, like I said, the reason we want to start with this is creating that foundation. And we get a few of these. How the session's going to go is when I do it, then you do it and understand it, we move on to the next drill. We're not going to spend all the time doing this, but I need to stress again, this one command is going to be something that's very important to you to do. You have a visitor to the house, I want you to be able to send him to his place and stay, all of that sort of stuff, yep. okay? So, with everything we do in training, it's always name before command, mainly because if we want name recognition. He could be with a bunch of dogs, with people. We want to be able to say his name, looks at us. No different than, you know, if I was behind that, my car over there and you didn't know where I was, you wouldn't just tell me to do something without saying, Jason, I look and you wait. You'd probably wait till I see you and you'd tell me to do it. It's just common sense, but we don't use it with dogs all the time. What we, what we forget is their sense of smell is so strong. Even him smelling now, He's smelling for hundreds of meters away and he's, they get like in that tunnel vision. So we need to just break him out of that little tunnel vision before we start. Go <coughs> hey, no, even that. He's not to bark at you for standing there. Every little thing is a teachable moment, okay? People go, oh, he's only a bark. Why are you barking? Because mum's standing there. We need to, we need, with this dog particular, I think you'd agree, we need to really be strict on every little thing with him. And we're gonna pull him back into line. Good boy. Ziggy, place. Stay. Good boy. Nice loose lead. Stay. Good boy. Free. Do you have a release command for his stay? We do. I say okay. Can I tell you why I don't say okay? Because it's said too much in general conversation. You just said it then. And what happens is the pro leave it. The problem with that is it weakens the command because it's heard all the time. We need to keep a command to the point where when he hears it, it really gets his attention. If we're standing around going, yeah, okay, the weather's good, okay, but he just hears this word all the time. Free is said less in conversation. Now, it's up to you, but I think it's, it's, it's very easy to change. Yeah. They're a I'm smart breed. Okay, Ziggy, hey, place. Yes, good boy. Sit, stay. Nice loose lead, good voice inflection. Stay. Now, even though he knows this, I'm still going to treat him like a puppy, like he's never learnt it, because, again, we're really recalibrating this dog. Good boy, stay. Ziggy. Free. Good boy. Can you see already with this little slip lead how easier I can, like when he was doing that little pull there, it's just a little pop. Yep. The reason is, it is more consequential. So people go, yeah, but it's thin and it might be uncomfortable and hurt him a bit. Point is, we need to do that. We need to have consequences. It's not about hurting him, but yes, you can't lie and say they're not designed to be perfectly comfortable. They're not. They are meant to be a little bit uncomfortable. So when he tries to do a certain action, I have the ability to correct that action. If I have a harness on a dog or a big flat collar around the neck, I can't give that consequence. It's not about wanting to hurt him, but it is about making him understand if you don't listen to my command, there will be a small consequence. It's not about yelping. I've seen many YouTube videos of trainers literally saying, if I don't get a yelp, it's not hard enough. We're never gonna try and get him to yelp, ever. But we are finding a level. It's a matter of every individual dog finding the level where we just get the result. Some dogs, it's a little touch, some it's a bit firmer, but there's always the level. It's always there. With him, it's actually not very much. When you return to him, pick up the lead, reinforce the stay. Minimal praise, good boy. Free. And touch the lead, good, perfect, good. Now do that again for me. Dog's name, place, stay. You don't even have to give a sit. Stay, drop the lead, walk back. Good, that's what I want. Good, we stand here for a minute. Now this would be what I'd call for him. Most dogs level one's there, but he knows a bit, so we'll call it his level one here. When you move to level two, is when he can do level one, let's say 10 times perfect, five times, pick a number. Then you go on. What people do wrong is they go from level one, they go, it's pretty good. Okay, let's get a bike, let's get a dog, and it all goes crazy. Yeah. We need to go through what we call approximations. In dog training, we use a term called successive approximation, which means we have an end goal to, let's say, for to get a scooter to come in and motorise. 
First step is this, second step is see the scooter, third step is person on it, and blah, and we build from there. That principle is what you're gonna to apply to everything in his life from now on. If I wanna fix something, my problem's here, you're gonna reverse engineer it, you're gonna start down here, you're gonna regress and go, okay, what is the first level I should start this with? Not where the problem is, start a little bit less and build up to it. Fix that off, tick that. Move to the next one, tick that, move to the next one. He's just, I think he is really just a classic high drive border collie mm. who's just taken advantage of me. Mm -hmm. That's as simple as that. I don't think he's a bad dog at all. I don't think there's anything wrong with him. I think he's just taken advantage of the lack of what you know. Yeah. Return to your dog, reinforce the stay, pick okay. up the lead, a little bit of praise, free, and drop the lead, let him relax. Get ready for the jump on you or the annoying. If he does, push him away. I don't want him even to be able to do this to you. When okay. he does that, push him off. Okay. No, no, you don't push on me. Okay. So everything I've taught you so far, think about this. I barely know you, okay? We just met and I'm here. This is appropriate sort of distance to talk to you from. Mm -hmm. Even though I am a nice person, you're a nice person, you wouldn't be very comfortable talking here, would you? Or leaning against you. Or, le yeah. or, do or stepping going, hey, how you going? I barely know you. Mm. It's inappropriate. And I'd, I'd even say with some friends, it's inappropriate. There's a level where it gets to. And what happens is with humans, we allow certain behavior in humans, so we cross it over to dogs. But we've got to understand, allowing that behavior that a human does in a dog leads to different issues. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Letting the dog do that is telling him, yeah, you're good. You can push against me, jump on me. He goes, oh, well, I'm I can bite you now then. No, no, you can't even lean against me anymore, okay? There's none of that. If he wants to sit near you, he can sit near you. If he sits and leans on you when you're taught you push him off, hey, don't lean on me. And people go, oh, but that's a bit of an overkill. It's, it's not an overkill. I've been doing this a very, very long time and I know that you give that much, like the saying, give an inch, it'll take a mile. Okay? So the first step into our impulse control is we need to start, well, this isn't small for a border collie, but we need to start with something less than his worst distraction. And you know how I said the bed is gonna cross over transferable to the vet and whatever? Yep. This is gonna cross over to transferable with the bike, with a car. Because once he knows leave this, when he knows that command, it means leave a dog, leave a bike, leave a car, leave anything, whatever. When you say leave, think of it as a term of disengage. Don't do it, what you're about to do. First thing is, this is the first approximation, first level. What's this? Hey. Leave it. Good boy, simple, not hard. Passes that test. As I do a next one, before I drop it, I give the, I reinforce the command. Ziggy, what's this? Leave it. That's a good boy. Good boy. Leave it. So how I'm using it is preemptively. I'm not waiting till he goes, I'm giving the warning before it. Okay? Next one I'll do, I throw a little bit more. Leave it. Good boy, free, free. And then his reward for leaving it is he can check it out. He doesn't have to pick it up, yeah. but he can check it out. Okay, so give that pre-warning. Leave it. Praise, Good boy. do it again. Leave it. It's all right, do it one more time, it's okay. Leave it. Now release him, tell free. him, free. Good boy, and try and encourage him to see if he wants to investigate it. We're gonna to go to a dog now, okay? okay? Good boy, he can look, he can do all this, and he may be fine with my dog. And it doesn't matter, you're still gonna learn the process. But I'm, I'm smart enough to know that a dog may do this, leave it, no. This is perfect, because I don't care if he doesn't bark, this is about teaching impulse, is not to lunge it. Good boy. Good boy. I'll just leave him there for a minute. Good boy, good boy, stay. Okay, when you, when you give Nash the release command to follow you, he's probably gonna wanna go with him, so I'll get another leave it in. Okay, go. Leave it. Ah, oh, good boy. So he didn't. Okay, so we call this step one, like he can stay on the place, and he hasn't lunged apart from the first time to get to my dog. Let's now, well, I'm gonna release him walking around, but he's still not gonna get to me. Okay, free. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So what I want you to do, Martin, is just keep Nash over here in a, in a sit beside you. And I'm going to 
make Ziggy think he's going to meet, but then I'm going to give him the leave it command in the last second or so. Okay, three. Leave it. Nope. Let's go. Leave it. Good boy. Let's go. Leave it. Yes, good boy. Good dog, buddy. Sit. Good boy. Okay, let's go. Leave it. Good boy. Good boy. Let's go. I know, buddy, a little confusing. Let's go. Good boy. So all I'm trying to teach him here is if I stop, you stop. You be aware of me where I'm at. Engage with me. It's not on your own terms, good boy. Okay? It's on your terms from here. In a moment, you're going to see an interaction between myself and Ziggy that I've been wanting to happen for the whole session. It's what I call a breakthrough moment, and it changes our relationship. You can see Ziggy here doesn't like being on a lead and walked around. He's never been on a slip lead. He's used to being trained for a lot of food, positive only, and he'll do anything. Take the food away, and he's what I call a protester. He doesn't want to do something, he'll protest back, especially without the food, and he's done it to the owner who's bitten her. Now this moment comes up in a second between myself and Ziggy. It's very small. I zoom in and slow it down. You'll see as I turn him, try to make him sit, you'll see there, mouth opens and just leans at my hand for a little attempted nip. Seems very minor, but it's a huge moment. You see me correct him there. And what I don't do is I don't lean back. I don't jump away. I don't build his confidence on that. That is a response that most dogs like Ziggy are used to. Someone going, oh my God, you scared me. You have to show confidence. This dog is a high drive, highly energetic working breed. A lot of it is not personal. He is just a dog that needs a good, strong leader. It's not about dominance. It's about being a leader and being in control and showing your dog what's acceptable and what's not. But this one moment changed our whole relationship for the rest of the session. He started engaging more. He never protested again and we got him great. These are moments that you need to have with your dogs out there. You need to gather confidence. If your dog is more serious and Ziggy and a real biter, you may need to muzzle them. But you have to go through this process to improve the relationship, the bond between you and your dog. Now tell me that's not a dog looking at me in a different way. Better. Yeah, way better. Yeah. Looking up at me going, okay. Not looking, not looking around, he's engaging. So this is what that little battle was. Let's, let's go, buddy. Let's go, good boy. So now I'm just gonna go to a, sh a little bit shorter on the lead. Let's go. And I'm purposely sort of, almost sort of annoying him here, just walking around, changing direction. Hey, let's go. I'm doing complete opposite what most trainers will tell you to do, which is hide, hide the problem, ah, redirect away from it. I'm daring him to do it, which most people won't do because they don't want to get bitten, I get it. But for you to fix this problem, I need to teach him, if I want to push you around, Good boy. I'm going to push you around. We're going to do more walking out there, but I want to go to a dog meeting. I want to show you how to get him to meet a dog and assess whether you think he's going to like this dog or not like this dog. Now, there's no guarantees in dog training or dogs, but this is a pretty good gauge to show what his intention is with this dog. Martin knows what I'm going to do, so he's going to meet my dog. I want to see where he wants to go. Let's go. This is what I want. I want a dog that wants to check my dog out from the back and he's not rushing to go to the sharp end. Good boy. Okay, so that's his little part. Now we do that in reverse. We let Nash meet your dog. Same thing. Good boy. Good boy. I've got him by the collar here. Just calm him down. He's relaxed. His mouth is open. So they both like each other. Good boys. Okay. Now the next step, now again, like I said, this is no guarantee. These are both working breeds, sort of highly strung dogs. Now we bring them together, free, but we both be aware of using our leads. So we let them meet. We're not looking for any pause of eye contact. I know for a fact, if my dog lets a dog do that, he likes him. His tail, he still might have a little rut because Nash can tend to do that here and there, but he likes your dog. He'll probably instigate some play in a minute, wouldn't surprise me. 
Good boy. Good, they're not, neither of them are looking for eye contact. They might give a little growl. If they do give it a little growl, a little teeth warning, people overreact about it. Don't overreact about it, okay? Yeah, you know your dog. Yeah, but what I want you to do though, what we get, he wants to play. You can see he's going to do a play bell. I can tell. You can let him go. Um, what I want you to do, they both really like each other, is, <laughs> is use this method though as an assessment for other dogs. Okay? Yeah. okay? <laughs> they really like each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very similar. Nash has got the ball now. <laughs> Let's see what his energy gets like now. He goes, the, the herding instinct kicks in, huh? So, watch this. If he gets too much, I'm going to correct his behaviour. So I'm actually watching your dog more than mine. That's all good. That's all play. He's building up a little bit. Hey, no, leave it. So that's a marking of a behavior. I'm allowing him a certain level. Still play. I mean, it's all, hey, leave it. Don't. Hey, leave it. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. So that's a lot. And doesn't surprise me. He's not being terrible. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, I just want to mark behavior that when I see him going in for that little nip at the back or a little play, it is only play with him. But with the wrong dog and things like that, I think you'd agree we don't want that. Yeah, yeah, we don't want that intention. You're doing good, that's what you're here for. Okay, so he knocks, don't worry about it. He knocks, you go up, you acknowledge your guests. You, you might open the door a bit. Have you got a screen door? No. Okay, so you'll have to open it a little bit and explain what's going on. In your words, whatever. I'll just, just yell through the door. And yell whatever you want. Wait a second, I'm just going to put Ziggy on his bed. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Place. Safe. Now I would stand behind it because yep. if he's going to lunge off at your guests and annoy them, it's going to be that way. So, so you, be, no, no, no. So you be here. So if he lunges, okay. Tell your guests to come in. Come in. Keep him there. Good. And then loose lead. Have your chat. Do your thing. Blah blah blah. He's past this now. From here, you might leave him here for ten minutes, twenty, half. An, I don't care. I want him to learn to stay here for a long time. At the point where you're going to let him off is where we anticipate he's going to jump on my guest, on your guest. Okay. So when you give him the free command, you keep the lead in your hand, yep. you walk him up, you wait for the jump. He jumps off. Okay. And then if you have to, you redo that, redo that, redo that until you are successful. So Martin's going to pat him now, you tell him free. free. Bring him over to him. Good. And then when he passes that test, you drop the lead. Yeah? So it's like a three step process. Front door, here. There, yeah? yeah? Okay, guys, you know what I'm going to say. Do the right thing. Hit the subscribe button. You've watched the video. You've got a lot of knowledge out of it. You can help your dogs, help your friends' dogs. Now all you have to do is hit that little button. It's very appreciated for content creators. It takes us time. We're bringing you all these skills, all this knowledge to help you out. And all we ask back is you give us a little subscribe, and it's very appreciated. Back to the video. Hope you enjoy it. Very positive for you. You're going to have a different dog, okay? okay? You've that's he's amazing. What, I mean, that's what kept me going for this long, that every now he's and again I get these. He's amazing. He's done nothing. He's, he's great. You've been, you've been told the wrong directions. Mm -hmm. You've spent a lot of money and wasted a lot of time with a lot of people who really, I feel, are outside their wheelhouse. A lot of these people, whoever, they come to your house and do behavioural stuff, haven't actually trained dogs. Mm -hmm. A lot haven't. They've learned off books and off a university degree and things like that. And I'm sure some of it applies, don't get me wrong. But it doesn't work like that in a lot of ways. And the main reason I've just said again is we put these human qualities and we overanalyze, putting tape on the ground. And they just, they get it. They're simple creatures. They just go, yes, no, I can, I can't. No worries, I'm good. Mm. And they just move past it. They don't take it personally. Sit. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> Come back past. Good boy. Now, as funny as that is, that's pretty distracting and, and 
I feel, I could be wrong, but I feel if you had the lead and we hadn't done this yet, I reckon he probably would have reacted to that. I think this slip lead is having a good effect and the previous training is crossing over as well. I want you to come over now. We're gonna go again. Now, even if he doesn't react, this is about- really like this because he's been on job sites for- Okay. Yeah. But this is more about you learning skills. Yeah. Now, the first thing I don't want you to do is this. I'll grab this again. Yeah. Don't go and grab it down here. Okay. I want you to give more lead. Okay. More, not less. If you hold it too short, day. he's too quick to react and you're pulling lead. Yeah. I give freedom, so I'm like this. Mm -hmm. Now, if he lunges, I do. Now, when he comes past, as soon as he engages, we give the preemptive leave it. Not, okay. Don't let him build. Okay. okay? Loose. Don't even grab it with the other hand. Yeah, stand relaxed. You can grab both hands on it or whatever you want. Okay, let's go. So he, he acknowledges it. Give him. Good, you've given him the leave it. What? Put his face right in the, in the yeah. lead blower. He loves it. <laughs> Come nice and close. Come walk forward. Give him the leave it. Good. No, I'm going to use no commands yet. I'm just going to work on his engagement still. Okay. Um, once he's engaged, going different directions where I go, then I'll implement the word again. So I'm going to pretend I'm going to start him a walk or out your house, you walk off. First thing is lead in the hand, full lead, give him the lead. Let him make a mistake. If I don't let him make it, I can't fix it. So I'm just gonna walk off, let's go. Good boy, come back, I'm gonna start again. Let's go. Only little pops and nothing. I'm just trying to catch him out. When I turn left, I turn into the dog. I literally push my knee through. Watch when I turn left. Good boy. I want him like that to learn to watch out for me. Good boy. Yes. When he does follow, I obviously give no pull of the lead. The feedback is when you're doing the right thing, the lead is loose. Good boy. Siggy, sit. Quick. Let's go. Little pop. Not a big one. It's, it's a timing thing. Good boy. Yes, good boy. He's got to learn the feedback. How do I avoid this lead? I follow this guy. Ah, oh, good boy. The biggest test whether you're getting result is if I change pace without a cue and then I speed up. Good boy. Yes, good boy. See the engagement I'm starting to get? This is how you'd start your walk, first two minutes. I get him on, on my page, and now I go on my walk. I could go for a run. Heel. Ah, uh, heel. No, nope, heel. I want lots of direction changes. When he's least expecting it, you're walking, you notice he's drifting off, watch. Change direction. Let's go. I need to make him realize he's got to pay attention. Otherwise, we're verbally cueing. I'm turning left, I'm turning right. Less verbal cueing. Nope. Yes, good boy. Let's go.
Good boy. Learning to use your body to guide your dog. Heel. 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 Sit. Heel. Sit. Heel. Quick. Ah, ah. Hey, heel. Okay, we're going to give him a little break and then you're going to have a go. Okay. Hey. No. While this leads in my hand, even if he's not been told to heal, he's not to pull me around. See this here? This is a dog that knows I'm in control. That's it. It's like, boy, okay. Now he's getting on my page. He's like, okay, you're good. You're the boss. If I go this way, but I change direction. I'm not asking him to heal, but when this is in my hand, couple of fingers. Yeah? Cool, we're gonna give him a break, then your turn. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep him there. I'm gonna see over time if he builds up to a bark, just by us not paying attention to him and him being there, which I feel he might. Yeah, just by that look and how he is. Now, even if he doesn't do it here, I'm going to give you the system of what I think will work and you should do. So two things we can do. You have him at a distance where you know, again, he's going to do the reaction. He does the reaction, does the bark, you go at him. Even from there, you give the lever. So don't wait to get to him. The second he does the bark, the quicker you connect the punishment, okay? Giving the punishment toward the positive punishment, whether it be a voice and a clap, the quicker the dog understands it. So, bark, leave it, and then walk towards yeah, you can do the clap there. So he does it here, boom, leave it. And we want him hearing it to the point where he goes, whoa, it's got to be serious. Okay. That's the first stage. The second stage could be this. Attach a long lead through here onto his collar. You can be five meters away. Now our timing can be better with the lead. So this, you've got the lead in your hand, try it watching TV. Put him in the crate, watch TV. Have your lead sitting on the lounge. So let's pretend that's attached to his collar. Yep. You're sitting on the lounge, leads like this. Watching TV. He barks, pop, leave it. Correction, no. Does it again, pop, no. And then look, if you want to go to positive reinforcement for not barking, fine. Go up later and give him a pat, give him a biscuit, let him know he's doing great, go for that. Reinforce the good stuff, absolutely. Do you advocate for, say, like long tubes in crates? Yeah, yeah, like anything like a... In there and yeah, okay? yeah, like a ten, animal tendon, the, the bully yeah. sticks and things like that, absolutely. Okay. If that's going to create a positive... Yeah, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not all about, hey, correct, correct, correct. I like the positive training. I think there's a place for it. But I also think it shouldn't be, I think where, where people go wrong with the food rewards is use it as redirect and as a distraction. I use it as more as a reward, not a bribe. So he barks, we go, leave it, pop. He doesn't bark for five minutes. Then we go over food, pat, praise, whatever. And yeah, bully sticks, marrow bones, whatever you want in there as a distraction. Absolutely, I want to attach a positive, emotion with being in this, not negative. And some people go, yeah, but you're correcting the dog, so isn't that negative with being in here? No, because I'm only correcting him when he does something wrong. I'm not correcting him and going, get in there, and I'm going yank, yank, yank on the lead from, for the fun of it. I'm, my timing has got to be impeccable. My lead's in my hand, he barks, boom. I want him to understand the only attention he gets from a bark is bad attention. And it won't have to be excessive, I promise you. We've seen today, it hasn't taken much. This is what I would do. I'd have a long lead. You can use a rope or a long lead like this. And then you might start close. But I actually want you to work this to the level where you know you're going to get a bark at him. So if it's one metre, you get no barks. It's pointless. Move it to two to three to the whole length of the lead. And if I feel, and you know your dog, if he's in there long enough, he's probably going to give you a bark. And you're going to get that correction. Okay? 
I would also, let's say you, that's going well within vision of him. But you notice when you go to bed and he's in the crate, he's doing it. Was, is your goal to be able to maybe put him in crate and sleep at night? Is there any reason? Okay. Get every now and again this bad behaviour, but if it's something that I'm going to need to do to be able to... Yeah, that so this... So, I'm not opposed. Yeah, so this is what I would do. Let's say you get good result not barking in the crate. We'll just get the dog barking less. Try sleeping at night where he is, no crate. It goes great, awesome. If it doesn't, he's still barking at night being outside because he's got too much free reign and he's walking around the yard and checking things out and barking. I would try crate training at night. Have him near your bedroom, have the lead. Have it in your bed if you have to. Barks, you don't even have to get a bed. Pop, leave it. And, and, and he, uh, I don't think it'll take long. I think very quickly with that there, giving that correction, I think you'll get a dog that's sleeping through the night. But the main thing is, is we're getting that really well-timed correction. Good boy, okay? So, even though he didn't give a bark then, it is an impossible question to answer, but, would he have given a bark in there if beforehand we hadn't done this training? Maybe. Probably because I think he would have. Exactly. I think he would have. I think you can't dismiss the importance of how this, how much this previous training and the connection between that has crossed over already to being in there. Okay. Let's go. Relax your shoulders. You turn where you want now without me saying anything. Imagine this is the start of your walk. Good. Little corrections. Good job, look at him, looking up at you. Yes, that one, good job. Four more turns and we're finished. Yeah, back to you, yes, good turn, use your body. That's the way, turn in with your body. Stop there, sit your dog. Okay, so when he sits wide, don't praise him because you want a straight sit. That's a little technical thing. That's okay. We're more concerned about behavior. We've got a dog that's paying attention. He's finer details. Good. Yeah, you can put it on the grass. These finer details in dog training can be fixed up. But from when I first took him out and knew, and he's like all over the place, I'm going one, I'm going left. So many times he's walking like this. Am I doing good? Am I doing good? Yeah. That's a dog checking in going, yeah, is this good? I'm, I'm doing good. It's amazing. I don't think you can get a bigger, better stamp on the end of a session to go, he's getting it, okay? He loves it. You're putting him into a world where he wants to be a working dog. If he's not getting to chase sheep, he wants to be doing obedience, but good obedience where he's paying attention. How much talking do we do then? Next to none. It's all correction or body language, a little bit of praise when he's doing good, don't overpraise him. I think that was amazing. Um, you've got systems now for everything. Meeting dogs, place command, crate, walking, a whole lot. Don't jump backwards on me. We're going to use the right equipment and yeah, get everything. You need a bit of a guide I've, on what to get. I've got all that, okay? I've got it all. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all good. So did you enjoy that? Yeah, that was awesome. It's the best I've had. Thank you. Awesome. So there you have it, guys. Look, we didn't see a lot of the problems, which isn't uncommon when the dog is out of the environment. But what I did do is gave the owner the answers to deal with the problems out, outside here. So very common that happens, but I guarantee her that if she sticks to those plans that you guys watch and there's procedures, she's gonna help this dog. So in the end, we worked out really, you just have a high drive border collie, has high energy, doesn't know where to put that energy and really hasn't been taught the right way. She's been, I believe, misguided in a lot of her training. Now I've set her on track and I feel that she's gonna get great results through this work and I'll follow up and I have no doubt this dog is gonna go great. Again, guys, if you enjoyed this content, got something out of it, which I'm sure you did, please do the right thing. You've watched the video, hit the little subscribe. It's not that hard. It is very appreciated. See you guys.